I can hardly believe it's been a whole year since Neil at RMC The Cave published his video about my adapters and special floppy drive for using real discs within WinUAE. Let's have a look back on that and everything that's happened since. It all started back in 2017, wanting to read my Amiga discs but not having a working machine. So I started a project to build a floppy drive interface to read Amiga discs on a PC using an Arduino. In 2017, there really weren't any other good cost-effective solutions to this problem, and it took a while to crack. When released, it went viral and was featured on a lot of sites such as Hackaday. After this, I added some disc writing support and several fixes, and then, mid-2018, the project went quiet. I had other things I wanted to work on. I always wanted to add support for WinUAE, but never had the time, and the code looked far too complicated for me to get my head around. In November 2020, I started to rethink this again. I'd started to do some updates to the project, and I'd seen numerous posts and comments about getting real disk access within WinUAE, and how it was supposed to be impossible. So I downloaded the WinUAE source code, and decided to take a look. My first attempt was an absolute total mess, and nothing worked. I scrapped the code changes and started again, this time with a fresh new design. You won't have seen my early attempts, and around December 2020 and January 2021 I created several private videos showing me booting things like Captain Planet and formatting a disc while Workbench multitask with ProTracker playing music in the background. These were all demos that I shared with a few people as a proof of concept, mainly the WinUAE development team to prove it was possible. Tony, the main developer, was very busy pulling WinUAE apart at this point, so I decided I would release my temporary unofficial version until he was ready. I've often been asked why this is such a difficult thing to do. Well, when you're working with a simulated environment, the emulator, that's not running in real time, it just appears to be, and then you have a physical drive that is working in real time, but you can't access it directly, and any data that's sent over USB comes in chunks or blocks, so you can't just read the data straight into WinUAE. Then, on top of this, you have an emulated operating system expecting to see data coming in from a disk drive in a simulated real time, and we can't freeze or slow that down or the emulator would become unresponsive. Needless to say, not a simple task, and if you'd like me to cover this more, leave a comment below the video. There was even a point where I spent an entire month wondering why my disks would intermittently boot, and it turned out to be an issue with literally one single missing bit from the data. It's hard to know sometimes what was going wrong. Anyway, once stable, I decided I wanted to share this with everyone. I wasn't doing this to make any money, and I wasn't selling my drawbridge devices at this point, so I purchased a grease weasel and reached out to Kia Fraser to get a firmware change that needed to make it work properly. A few revisions of firmware and WinUAE code changes later, and grease weasel was booting just as well as my drawbridge device. Towards the end of March 2021, I reached out to Neil at RMC The Cave, one of my favourite YouTube channels, to see if he'd be interested in showing what I'd made, and I sent him a drawbridge board based on an Arduino Nano, all wired up, ready to be connected to a floppy drive. With the build of Neil's new cave in full swing, Neil sure was busy, and in May I sent him one of the slimline drives I'd made up to make it all a little bit easier. We had a quick video call, and I talked him through a few bits, and then off he went to make a video. At this point, I didn't have a clue what the video would be like. That brings us to June 2021 when Neil released the video to the world, and it seemed to take the world by storm. I don't think either of us expected it to do as well as it did. My newly set up Discord server was flooded with new people, and his video seemed to appear just about everywhere I looked. At the same time, I shared the video and the news with the Grease Weasel community too. Following the success of the video, I set up a waiting list and went into production of initially making drives for people to buy. Later, to make things cheaper, I switched to just selling a PCB that you could easily fit yourself. This was the first time I'd designed and ordered PCBs, so it was a great learning experience for me. The waiting list had grown well beyond my expectations, and if there hadn't been a global component shortage, I'd still be preparing and selling them now. For everybody still waiting, I'm really sorry, but one day these chips will become available again and at a reasonable price, and I'll start supplying them as fast as possible. During all this excitement, I started working with Demetrius, the creator of Amiberry, and we worked together to add support for what I was now calling Floppy Bridge. The first version was a little unstable, but that improved, and with the current version, it's now really stable and absolutely amazing. After several new releases of my special WinUAE build, and with several fixes and improvements, I heard back from Tony, the maintainer of WinUAE, who, having finally made all the big changes to WinUAE, was ready to integrate this into the official build. We opted for a separate plugin, so I could maintain it without him needing to do anything once the initial changes had been made. 
This was finally released to the public on the 6th of December 2021. Several versions of this plugin later, and we now have support for Jim Drew's Supercard Pro Board too. Thanks Jim for sending me that. As of this video, I've just released a small update to Floppy Bridge, the WinUEA plugin, and Drawbridge software. There's not really much more to be done here, to be honest. Copy protected game compatibility is now far higher than I'd ever imagined, and the project has gone way beyond anything I could ever have imagined, so I guess that brings us up to date. It's been an incredible journey, and I've loved every minute of it. So many amazing and kind comments, and lots of support from so many people, and I thank you all for that. I owe a big thank you to Neil at RMC for making the introduction video, and in the style that only he can. The follow-up video, where my drive was shared with Mike Daly, creator of Lemmings, to help rescue some old discs, which included the Lemmings level editor. I never thought I'd be part of that. So where do I go from here? Well. Some of you know I'm working on an interface for the Mister. I don't have a lot of free time at the moment, so this project is going slow, but I do have a small group of people helping too. It's progressing, and I'll bring you some further news soon. And once the component shortage starts to ease, I'll hopefully have more drawbridge boards available again soon too. I'm hoping to get out a bit this year, maybe to some Amiga events, and maybe I'll bump into a few of you. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.